What is up, creatives? It is Jarrell, your music technologist. Back at it again, and I'm here to help you master the tech you need to make music freely. I hope you guys have had a great start to your week. I'm pumped to get into today's content, how to automate in Beatmaker 3. We're gonna talk about some of the pluses and the minuses too when it comes to Beatmaker 3 and automation. And we're gonna make sure you guys know what you're doing when you go in there to do it. So I got Beatmaker 3 locked and loaded on my iPad right here. I've got a session loaded up here. This is the session from, the, the instrumental session from the song that I made called The Crown with my, my brother Noble. If you guys haven't heard that song, stream that song up. But I thought this would be a good example uh, to dive into because I did some automation in this when making the beat. So when you're looking to automate something, you gotta make sure you have whatever you're going to automate loaded up here in your playlist view, right? So these are all of our tracks. You can do automation on individual instruments. You can do automation on audio clips. You can do automation on banks and you can do automation on auxiliary tracks. So why would I ever want to put an automation on a main? Well, for several reasons. If you ever want to do a fade out at the end of a song, for example, I did one here. All you got to do to, to start automating something is go into whichever track you want. In this case, I have main and then hit track automations. And here is a nice little window here. Oh, right, I forgot I did the, <laughs> the fade, out, fade out I was talking about is on the full song with the vocals, not this one, but I did automate some filter sweeps in here using the main uh, channel here, the main out. This particular one I played in using Koala under effects. Koala effects is one of the plugins that I use often to automate things. And this isn't something that you have to have in order to be able to automate Beatmaker 3, but you can automate effects plugins, uh, many parameters right in here. So what I did was I played in a filter sweep. I went like this, I went, held it down here, let it go up, 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 let go. And that recorded it in. Here's the filter sweep. Okay, it's going down. Very slowly, it's going back up. I could do that, say I wanted to automate something else with a filter sweep, let's just go to a different part of the song and let's start it, say let's start it from the beginning and we'll go ahead and pull up Koala. So I'm gonna automate a filter sweep here in Koala Effects. Now the main thing you need to do is tap this little A up here um, and that's your automations. So you want record automations turned on. Now you can set quantize automation, um, that's not really important. I generally would try to keep it off so you can get it nice and smooth, unless you're trying to do something particularly jagged, and then you can set the quantize for that. And then re-enable on loop, that would mean basically when it loops it, it continues to automate. And you know, you might or might not want that. So, all right, cool. We've got automations turned on. Let's automate from the beginning. Let's do it. Two, three, and. Okay, let's see if we got something. We should. There it is. So that's the automation I just played in. Now, in under many circumstances, I will play it in and then I'll say, that wasn't perfect. Let me fine tune it. Say I wanna make this line up perfectly, this swell up. Maybe I want that to line up perfectly at the, at the two mark there. Here's what I'll do. Grab that Apple Pencil, or you can use your finger if you want. And we will tap this little uh, jagged thing here. This makes a bunch of different points. And then we'll make sure we have our snap set to free. And I'll zoom in, and I'm gonna just touch this up a little bit. So boom, brush the line in, and there it is. Super easy. I actually didn't like the automation, so I'm just gonna get rid of the whole thing. We'll just undo it. Undo it, and we're back to where we were. So you can always undo your automations. Now, before I go any further, let's talk a little bit about some of the pluses and minuses that I ex have experienced with Beatmaker 3's 
automation. So I, before coming to iPad music production, I've been an FL Studio desktop guy. I, that's where I started, what, 13, 12 or 13 years ago. I started producing in FL Studio and I was rocking with it until I got on the iPad train. And one of the things I like about it is they do automation clips. So every time you make an automation, it creates a clip. And I can copy that clip and drag it anywhere for any part of the song. And it will apply specifically to whatever instrument I selected. Unfortunately, that is not how it works in BeatMaker 3. I wish it was, but the way it works is this, it's drawing automations into the whole playlist. So this track automations window, this is basically one giant window, one giant playlist of automations. And to copy and paste, is a pain in the butt. And that's what I'm talking about. So you can see I have pretty much a duplicate here, two filter sweeps, all right? And the way I was able to duplicate those was it was pretty rough. Let me show you how it's done. So if you say I played that automation in I, and I did a sweep and I want that sweep to happen again later in the song. So I would need to go ahead and highlight all the points here. I missed a couple. I can just double tap that and that would that would select the whole thing but in this case I really just want this portion so the hardest part is getting all the way to the top here because I still didn't do it <laughs> yeah that's it's pretty it's pretty finicky so let's see if we can get it yeah see these are the kinds of things that irritate me about it but <laughs> anyway so I can take that and I can hit duplicate all right, and it duplicates that section there. And then I can take this and drag it from this first point here to wherever it is that I need it. So I need another filter sweep uh, after the song is over. <laughs> and there it is. That's how you would dupl duplicate it. And you'd have to do the, the hard work of making sure that lines up where you want it. You can use a snap if you want and set that to quarter and you can drag it, you know, that's, that's snapped more. We can do a whole bar drag it by a bar, see how it's kind of snapping in there. That's good, but it's not nearly as good as being able to duplicate clips and just doing it that way. So, all right, that's the worst part for me about BeatMaker 3 and automation is trying to copy your automations, which you're gonna to wanna to do. If you have a part of the song that does the same thing twice, like this filter sweep that I did, you're gonna to have to copy it, or you can redraw it in, and in that case, it won't sound exactly the same. Um, and sometimes you, you really want it to sound exactly the same. So that was just automating a filter sweep. There's so many more parameters that can be automated. So for example, up here, I have uh, this module pro up here, this top one. During the song, there's gonna be a cool effect you'll hear during this verse here, and I will explain how I automated it. So let's just listen. It's gonna happen right around here. So that was actually two different parameters that I automated in Koala Effects. Let's hear it one more time just so you can get a, a handle for what exactly happened. There's like kind of a ringing sound and then also like a, a, a cutter. And here it is. Cool. So I played that in and then I came in here and edited it. So this ring right here is actually a parameter in Koala Effects. So if I go to Audio Effects, find Koala, pull it up. You can actually see exactly what happened. Let me play it one last time and you can see what is being automated here. Here it is. That was automated in there. So uh, I'm automating this ring effect to go all the way up at the top and then come down really quick. And then there's also a cutter on the second half of this. So there's a tab here showing everything that's been automated. If I go to cutter, that's the parameter that I automated for this section as well. And then after that, I decided, well, oh, this whole thing's kind of, kind of too loud. So I added a saturator and used the gain knob and automated a little bit of a decrease in volume for this section. So all that, that I actually penciled in myself. I didn't play that in or anything. And that's something that you can do in here. Little stuff like that, it's real ear candy and you don't get those kinds of things most of the time without automating. Something to note, if you ever duplicate a channel, a, a bank, say I wanted this bank, just this instrument, I wanted to use it for something else in the song, 
when I hit duplicate here, it's going to duplicate any of the automations that I did for this. So if I just want to have this instrument and I don't want it interrupted by the automations I did, I need to go to this new channel from the, the duplicate one, hit track automations, and I got to go in and X these away. That's something to keep in mind. So if you ever copy uh, one of your banks here and you're like, why, why is my new instrument sounding strange like this? Check your automations. Let me show you guys really quick how you could do a fade out using automation. This is how we do it in BeatMaker 3. So you go to track automations on the main, okay? And I personally, whenever I do anything with gain and automation, I like to throw a saturator on whatever it is and just use the gain knob in the saturator. So let's go ahead and go to audio effects. Let's throw a saturator on it, leave the amount down, and then we'll use this gain to automate. So the way I would add a new automation for that parameter is hit automation here. Okay, scroll down to saturator. It's there at the bottom. Okay, tap that. And we want to do the gain, not the amount. So we'll hit gain. And then the song ends right around the 58 mark. So we're gonna run the tail all the way to, you know, say 59. Let's go ahead and change this to free because I kind of like to draw my own tail. Um, and let's start right around here. So we gotta make sure we start at the zero decibel mark, which is where we are. And we'll go ahead and we'll make a mark first. Let me go ahead and turn this on. We'll do half. All right, let's go ahead and tap this one in right before where we're gonna start so that we have a mark. All right, so that's at zero. So anything we do now is gonna, it's not gonna affect what, what was happening before. So make sure you set yourself a marker. All right, we're gonna go back to free snap. All right, and let's go ahead and draw down like this. Boom, piece of cake. And generally when you do a fade out, you kind of want to have like a like a parabolic curve here, or exponential curve. You don't want to do super straight because it, it won't sound right. But here's what, what happened when I did that. Easy peasy, that sounded like a legit fade out. Let me show you guys another way that you could automate gain, all right? So if I wanted to do it manually, like with my hand, I wanted to have control the whole time, like turning a knob, here's what I could do. Let's just go to my macros tab. Actually, let's go back to audio effects and I'm gonna map this gain knob here. I'm gonna set it to macro one. If I go to my macros, you can see this now controls that gain. See that? All right, so we'll do this. We'll go ahead and hit play and we'll record this automation in. Make sure you have automations turned on, recording automations. So here we go. I'll start there. Let it go. There it is, we'll hit stop. And it recorded my little shaky automation there. See, so everything I did with that gain here from the main out in this macro tab was recorded in. And that's something you can definitely do with any parameter. Map your parameters to your macros. And if you have a MIDI controller, say like the Sensil Morph, you can map those macros to these knobs and you can also record it that way. So there we go. All right, so I'm moving this right here. I don't know if you can see that. Moving this and it's responding over here. So you can map it to your MIDI controllers and record your automation that way. So we've covered the basics. One thing I wish Intua would add for this in BeatMaker 3, I wish they would add the ability to make groups the way it is in Cubasis 3, having grouped instruments. So that way we could just automate a whole group. Obviously you can do that with your aux channels, but that's not gonna automate the audio that's coming from the source channels themselves. It's only gonna automate what's being sent to the auxiliary. So also the ability to have clips, like I talked about before, that you could copy and paste somewhere, that would be great for automation. It would also be nice to be able to copy automation straight from one instrument to another instrument. That would be dope. Now I can't talk about automation in Beatmaker 3 without talking about one of my, my primary gripes with it is, I would love to be able to automate 
turning the effects on and off. I've, I've mentioned this before in other videos. Being able to, for example, in Koala Effects, having a, a mute effects or on and off for Koala would be great. So I could just make everything from Koala stop and give me the raw audio for a bit, and then I could bring it back. That would be something that would be dope because sometimes you want to go between processed and unprocessed, and to do that with one parameter would be really helpful instead of having to automate every single parameter to go off and then back on. So my final verdict when it comes to automation in BeatMaker 3 is it's definitely cumbersome and can be confusing, but it is very much doable and I highly recommend you guys do it when you're making your beats. Automate things, you know, music is movement, it's emotion, and you gotta create some, some movement in your music. Don't just have the same pattern looping, looping, and looping without any kind of movement between it. Um, I think people really tend to enjoy music that flows. All right, that has been it for automation. Quick question of the day. What is the part of Beatmaker 3 in your music production that you feel like is the most difficult to do in Beatmaker 3? I would be happy to make a video on, you know, whatever that is and give, you know, some in-depth help on trying to get you guys to have a smooth in and out with Beatmaker 3. Things like automation, which I covered here, maybe something like the macros tab, anything that seems confusing to you guys. Let me know down in the comments section what you guys would like me to cover on Beatmaker 3. All right, y'all, until next time, creatives, go make something dope, and I'll see you in the next video.